good evening and very warm welcome to all of you let's start with a quiz any idea which year all india radio started any guesses please speak loudly no no any more guesses i think it was 1937 if i am not wrong so no problem the radio industry i mean we can understand ki how radio industry has come a long way over the past century almost and and there is one one more question i mean do you have an idea from which city radio started first ever radio transmission started which city is mumbai i think radio club of mumbai was the first to start radio transmission in 1927 okay uh, so what lies ahead in the future we have seen how radio has survived you know past almost a century and uh, what lies ahead in the future we would like to understand from this tal was in the industry ab thomas and uh, ramesh menon and sayugita has given us a very interesting topic you know uh, road map ahead okay so i think the content is the most important thing for all kind of media but i think for radio it is all more important you know because it is an audio right and whether it is music is entertainment interviews or maybe like uh, news you know this is a content which you know keeps engaging your your audience so i would like to understand you know from you app uh, what con- content strategies have worked for you so far and how it is evolving over the years and what is the road map ahead okay if you, if you don't mind uh, before we jump into content i, I think we should uh, put things in perspective right i just recently saw uh, some research studies of radio in the us of audio in the us 69% of the ad revenue still goes to am and fm and am is also big in in america uh while the share of year of fm is about 35% 70% of the revenues are still going to radio all the hype around digital audio is somehow not getting the revenues that it requires if you were to look at india my estimate is that 80% of the revenue goes to am and fm barely 20% goes uh to digital audio while we understand that the whole pie is under stress there was a time when uh, radio used to be 4% of the adx we probably now slightly over 2% uh, because the rest of the mediums are growing faster but this pie is also growing so i don't think there is any basis on which one can say that uh, radio pie is shrinking or what is going to happen to radio and it's going is digital going to take over radio i don't think that there is any basis to believe that secondly the uh composition of revenues in radio have changed right there was a time when probably 90 95% of the revenues were coming from fct spots today the amount of money that comes beyond spots is probably 25 to 30% and we project that in another years time 40% of the total revenues will come from beyond radio so this huge opportunity that is come up because of the whole growth in digital consumption is actually the opportunity for radio while the core of 50 to 60% continues to grow at 10 and 12% the balance 40% is growing at really fast uh, pace and when when i see revenues of some of the streaming platforms we three four of the bigger networks make more money out of digital audio than they do right so monetization of the other thing is a is a big challenge and it is the larger networks with large sales teams with strong uh, advertiser connect with great local insights uh, great talent all of us have 100 plus influencers on our uh, team and that is what is driving this whole uh growth of radio so if anyone's thinking that oh it's a downward spiral you're wrong like you should analyze the books of uh, uh, all the large players and you'll see that there is growth coming 
Yes, the nature of the business has changed. So the first part I think we should establish because it's everyone here thinks that, oh, we are on a downward spiral. A monetizing digital audio is a challenge everywhere, including India. And Ramesh, who's doing a lot of great work in that space, will elaborate on that uh, more. And the radio networks have the advantage of being able to go out and monetize this. Right? So this is one point I wanted to say before we jump into content. Yes, consumption habits have changed. So people are consuming content uh, very differently from how they were doing it, uh, say, before COVID. And therefore, if you talk about um, the uh, what, how has content changed? Content needs to now be omnipresent. So you have to make sure that the content can work across multiple touch points. Normally, the same audio content doesn't work on another medium, doesn't work on social media, doesn't work on this. But the smart creators and the smart uh, radio jockeys know what will work on what medium. So that, that is a clear difference that we've uh, seen. Uh, we've also seen radio is not used to building IPs, right? Because 85% of our content belong to the music labels. But now with omnipresent uh, distribution and availability across platforms, all of us are focusing on building our own IPs. So whether it's regional IPs, local IPs, and these IPs are gaining a lot of traction and you're able to A, monetize them across multiple touch points and you're able to build larger and larger IPs going forward. So content is now being looked at as multi-platform. Yes, there is also, there is a video bias in this country, right? And YouTube continues to be the biggest digital platform for audio consumption as well. And all of you all would have encountered that. So when we are creating content, it's about creating it for multiple medium. You, I mean, every podcast today has a camera in it as well, right? Because people also want to uh, see what, the way it's uh, uh, moving. Us purists will hate it saying, hey, it's audio and um, why do you want to see the video of, of the audio? But uh, so these are some of the changes that we are seeing and it's about multi-platform distribution and consumption and the content needs to adapt to the to that platform. Wonderful insight. Ramesh, I would also like you to share your perspective on the sector overall and also uh, your content strategy. Yeah, uh, th thank you for having me here. Uh, I think the critical thing is that uh, when we've been in an industry for a long time, one tends to get sort of siloed in it and start thinking of it as the be-all and end-all of everything. And sometimes when you speak to RJs and so on, they keep thinking that you know, it, it's about radio. To me, uh, all these businesses, whether you're on television or radio or uh, digital or anything, it's all about content. There is only one business, that's the business of content. And the mediums can change, platforms can change. Today, Meta is there, Facebook is there, tomorrow it may not be there. It doesn't really matter. It's really about content. Are you creating the kind of content that consumers want to listen to or uh, view at the point of time that it exists is all that matters. So all of us in any particular industry, whether it's a television industry or the, I mean, tele the same discussions could happen in the television industry, in industry because many people are not even watching television now. You ask a young person, they're not watching, they don't even have a cable TV connection. They don't have a Tata Sky or a, you know, Airtel Digital or whatever it is. So content consumption habits are changing. Content is the only permanent thing, the medium, or the platform does not matter. And that's really the way we need to rethink radio also. Let's look at ourselves and, and we have the best creators. I mean, I haven't, I'm not a radio person, you know, f for a long time, but I've been here three, four years. Uh, but I think the most creative people are housed in a radio company, right? And they don't need to be creative. I mean, there's that much creativity that you can, you can deliver to radio. There is so much more out there in this world that you can utilize your creativity for. And it's really about how you can take your creativity and create content for the universe, for the universe of listeners. And that's really what strategy, content strategy, uh, you know, business strategy for the future needs to be. And, and personal strategy for the creators in the, in the radio company also needs to be. Right? How can you create content that listeners and viewers can view or watch or listen to 
uh, irrespective of medium and platform. And it doesn't matter if radio doesn't exist or doesn't matter if television doesn't exist. It could be something else tomorrow. It might be all driven by satellite, but we are still content creators. And we have brilliant content creators in, in all of these radio companies, but some of them are getting siloed by thinking of themselves as radio creators. We are content creators is, is my view, a slightly outward in view of the ecosystem right now. A yeah, very important point you made, like you are content creator. And Ab, I would also li like to know, I mean, how has uh, the audience demography changed over the years? So, so un unfortunately, we don't have too much of research uh, on radio. Uh, but uh, whatever studies that individual radio networks are doing, and more importantly, the kind of uh, insights we are getting from the digital data which is currently available. Like, for example, if I were to go by digital uh, download of music, uh, the share of Bollywood music has dropped from 80-85% to about 60-65%. Independent music has gone up. So a lot of these changes are happening in terms of the taste itself. Uh, earlier, we came from a school where we said that um, uh, we will only play after the song has become familiar. We thought radio was about hummability. If I know the song and I can hum it, that's when I should start playing it. But today, the audience is trying to discover music, right? So all of us are now more ambitious in terms of saying, let's now break new sounds, introduce them to uh, newer um, uh, sounds and stuff like that. So, a lot of these things have now changed in the way the uh, consumption is happening, right? And one needs to bear that in mind uh, as you are creating content. And like Ramesh rightly said, it's all about content. And uh, if there is good content, people will go and seek it, right? Wherever, wherever it's uh, getting played out. Yeah, Ramesh, I would like to understand the uh, advertising thing. I mean, how uh, advertising has evolved on the radio and you are basically dealing with digital radio. So how different it is on digital radio compared to traditional radio? And also if you can share some case studies with us. Uh, I don't think there's anything called digital radio in India as yet. So uh, there is digital audio, which is podcasts and so on, but uh, there is no digital radio and unfortunately in the country. Uh, and with the way regulations are and all of the statutory requirements are, I don't think it will ever come unless some dramatic changes happen. Uh, given that, uh, I think ad agencies, and I don't think ad agencies also exist anymore, it actually uh, completely controlled by media agencies. And uh, you know, when the, when the RJs were talking about ad agencies, ad agencies, I thought I was going back to the 90s and 2000s, you know, uh, discussing what ad agencies are doing. Ad agencies don't have a, you know, any connection with us anymore. It's really about the media agencies, and they have no clue about all of this stuff except data. Right? They have data at their thing, which is, you know, the listenership or the, I mean, for radio listenership doesn't really exist, but for everything else. And they are only in their Excel sheets. Right? And how do you make sure that a person who's, who's not probably a radio listener, not probably a television viewer, sitting from morning 9 to evening 9 and, you know, crunching data on Excel sheets, delivers to you what you want for your consumer is the biggest challenge that there is. Right? Most of them have no clue about what it is that consumers are listening to. Most of them have no idea what consumer interests are or how they are changing. And uh, they are living in a world of their own. And how we can convince them about it is the perception that we build. How good your sales team is in building that perception with the team is all that matters. So that's really the big change that's happened. Earlier, you could go to an ad agency, they would create campaigns with you. You know, all of that, that era is, is, is not there anymore. So there is an entire ecosystem which is unconnected with creativity, which is actually telling you whether you're, you're to advertise or you're part of the advertising plan or not. And that is the biggest challenge, I think, uh, the radio industry and uh, advertising industry or the, the, the uh, media industry as a whole is facing. Very important point you made, and Ab, so, I would like to understand. So, it. just to add to that, uh, if I were to see how uh, advertising sales has evolved, earlier there was a time when we were selling spots. We were saying we have so much of inventory. This is the kind of content, so let's kind of uh, buy spots with us. 
From that, we moved to selling audiences and we said, now we have audiences and we can give you different cuts and different demographics and you can target your uh, audience better. But now I'm clearly seeing that we have moved to the era of solution selling, right? We, brands are interested in solutions that work for them. So we've become more evolved uh, solution sellers and depending on the brief, increasingly brands are beginning to trust radio networks with deeper brand briefs and we are then able to create a solution that works for it. So that's what we are trying to do. So when I'm saying that from a 90-10 we are moving to a 60-40, it's because of the solutions we are able to create for brands and which is where the whole pie is growing, right? So the profile of the media sellers and I'm, I'm a, I started up as a ad sales guy, we were hustlers. We knew this guy has 20 lakhs, let me go pull 30 out of him. And we were all about deal making. And uh, for us, we didn't really worry about content. Whatever the client liked was great content. The client didn't like this idea, so throw it, take the next one. To us now becoming strategic brand partners, using data, using account planning, using creative solutions, to come up with a solution that works for the brand challenge. And radio being local makes it a big thing. We've got one of the really interesting briefs which we worked and cracked was a toothpaste brand saying he sees East UP as a rational market and West UP as a uh, emotional market. And he's saying the same toothpaste gets perceived differently in both markets. Because you are local, can you deep dive and come up with a brand solution for us that will address this problem? That's the kind of briefs you're working on. And so we are all becoming solution providers. We became I mean, brand consultants because we have a high reach medium, we have a high impact medium, and it's local. Right? So it's quite interesting. That, that's the shift. Yeah, yeah. Ramesh, your perspective on you know personalization. I completely agree, and, and that's really where the, we need to work extra hard to build that perception in people's minds and provide the solutions for advertisers and, and things. There is, uh, you know, I mean, we, we still, I think the radio business more than any other business is really still a bunch of hustlers trying to, you know, crack a deal, uh, try to get business, trying to get business where there none, none exists. And that's the biggest challenge that will be there going into the future as well. As uh, clients get more and more, look at what, how marketers have changed. A marketer cannot work today without data that comes out of a, you know, a box, right? So the moment he does a campaign, immediately if he doesn't get data, he has a challenge. And he's not able to convince his boss that he's done a good campaign. And his ultimate objective is to convince his boss that, you know, boss, the campaign has worked. But unfortunately, with, with, with the kind of things that we sell, we need to build perception and we need to build uh, loyalty, we need to build uh, trust, we need to build all kinds of, you know, the fuzzy stuff uh, without the data. And that's the biggest challenge that sales teams in, in radio companies have because they are fighting against the odds, uh, trying to convince a client about how uh, I can give you a better solution than, than somebody else. And the other solution has data that comes out immediately which says, here it is. And that, that, if we can crack that challenge of getting data to support your, your solution, then I think uh, we'll be in a far better place than we are. And that's really what uh, the future has to tell. I don't know whether it'll happen or not, but that's, that's really the biggest challenge. Yeah. So now I think everyone is talking about programmatic, so… And in fact, most marketeers have become lazy marketeers. Because in, in our days, when we were doing brand management and marketing management, we had to really work, our gut was as important as the as the Excel sheet that was in front of us or the data we got from somebody else or we had to you know, interpret data very differently. But today the guy, media planner sitting there is just, you know, putting some drop downs and checking some data and or getting data from uh, Google on his last campaign and saying whether it's successful. So there's no, there's no room for creativity, intuition and all of that stuff which really makes a difference between good marketing and you no know, ordinary marketing. But are those measurements uh, correct? I mean, Nobody knows. I mean, nobody's gone to the black box of Google and seen whether they're actually delivering the impressions that they're giving or not. Nobody knows. As long as I can convince my boss that the impressions are delivered, that's more than enough. Why do I need to bother whether it's real or not? I think measurement in all media is in crisis. And uh, so everyone is talking about, you know, programmatic. I would like to understand 
app from you how programmatic advertising is being utilized in radio and what opportunities does it offer you know for revenue growth oh, programmatic i think in india specifically in audio doesn't exist if you look at all the digital uh, audio digital platforms their money comes either from direct brand sponsorships and brand integrations <coughs> or it comes from some direct sales that they do but a bid based platform based programmatic uh, sales is very very small now there are attempts quite a few people are aggregating audiences so that you are able to uh, currently see the size of the audience is very splintered and therefore till the size of the audience reaches a critical mass and there are these aggregators who can then execute large campaigns programmatic is just a is a concept that uh, everybody throws around but where's the volume right yeah. now i can see two three large platforms trying to aggregate audiences across platforms which then makes it critical mass to monetize then it will probably start this is my uh, impression of programmatic yeah and your no so i uh, i started a podcasting business uh, four or five years ago and uh, then three years ago i tried to set up an ad engine for uh, delivering programmatic advertising to uh, for podcasting because we realized that podcasting will never become uh, you know uh, will never become a big enough thing unless there's monetization and monetization will not happen we can't keep chasing display advertising or equivalent of display advertising which is sponsorship or whatever that so we had to get programmatic advertising and we tried to set up an ad engine for uh, programmatic uh, advertising uh i have failed and i uh, continue to fail every time i try to set something up on on programmatic advertising multiple people have come into the country uh, and said they are doing it uh, but that's failed spotify has been you know uh, pitching their uh, ad, you know ad engine called span for the last few months that also has, has failed so programmatic advertising advertising on audio is going to be a big challenge i don't think it's going to come that easily uh, india will still survive on the equivalent of display advertising or you know you stitch in your ads and you go to us you know on a sales call ask for ask a client for money he stitches the i mean he gives you the ad money and then you stitch it in order i mean it's nothing is automatic nothing is personalized so that's the way advertising will continue for some time in in uh, in in the space in the digital audio space i don't think it's changing any time soon but is yes there's hope is it working well abroad it is i mean uh, programmatic mon uh, monetization on podcast is pretty much uh, the way that uh, advertising happens in in the us not much anywhere else uh, i don't know how long it will take to come to india okay so i'll come come back to you uh, ab very quickly but let me ask rabesh first which emerging formats you foresee you know shaping the industry in the coming years i think uh, the most important thing in the industry is to remain agile and uh, you know be open to any format that can come which is why i started off saying that we are content creators doesn't matter if tomorrow there is no radio and there is no television and there is something else whatever we are as content creators we have to be ready for the format ready for the medium ready for you know that platform so that uh, you know we satisfy the need of the listener or the or the or the uh, viewer at that point of time so be absolutely clear that things can change dramatically and be prepared for the change and that's that's really the only way that i see things happening in the yeah. in the country. things can change dramatically ab your point of view yeah so i'm uh, we are approaching this from the other side we see ourselves as solution providers and says your brand has a marketing challenge tell us we'll try and come with a solution we uh, we get success because we have a huge reach on our medium if i were to go sell some of those other uh, digital variations um, uh, stand alone we don't get too much success but moment i say hey do a podcast with us and my radio can actually drive audiences to it then there's a story so it's all, so we, our approach is solution uh, creators solution sellers and it's all based on radio 
That's why people acknowledge us. If I go and say, I will create a gaming op a solution for you, they'll say, what do you know about gaming? But moment I say, this is my gaming partner and I have this huge reach medium which can drive audiences, I have a proposition. Yeah. Since both of you are, you know, very seasoned leaders, so I would also like to know from you, what are the major challenges that radio industry is facing at present? And do you want any changes from the government? So I'll answer this. I mean, we've been, I think we have spoken about this for 20 years now and uh, uh, the uh, narrative seems to not have changed too much. But I sometimes, honestly, I mean, it must be my age, I sometimes wonder about the legacy we're going to leave behind uh, Ramesh. In terms of, as, a, as an industry, we have seen the industry drop from 4% to 2% in the annex. We have not managed to create a measurement system which creates some level of accountability. We all wax eloquently at forums such as this that how we have to be accountable and we must do it, but we never agree on anything that comes close to uh, measurement. We shy, shy away from uh, accountability and therefore that's one. Second big challenge this industry has is devices itself, right? There have been attempts and where we are trying to get devices, either get the FM activated on mobile phones or make other devices available so that it's convenient to listen to uh, FM. So unless the third is obviously the whole music rights domain, uh, every other country has a mirror of the FM feed playing out on in, uh, on. Uh, in the digital as well. And I'm talking about live radio. Here we only have on-demand audio, right? You go in and there is hardly any live radio. Actually, there's no live radio. So we need to find a solution where we can make this uh, device constraint go away. And we need to find a solution where the music rights on, at least on a live digital radio, becomes a workable solution. So unless we... Uh, address three of these or four of these key issues uh, head on and find a solution, I think we're leaving behind a very sad legacy. Yeah, so I have mentioned, you know, uh, measurement thing, device and music right uh, issue. Would you like to add on? So there is uh, music rights, uh, measurement and all of that. And there is also the fact that we are the only uh, industry that pays such a huge license fee. Right, and uh, I think unless that changes, uh, the profitability of this industry will never be close to what any other industry uh, has. So, if a person has uh, 100 crores and wants to invest in, in something, uh, there would be far better options to invest in than the radio industry for the reason that, I mean, I can speak for myself, 35% of my revenue actually goes to the government as license fee. Right, depends on where, depending on where you are in the country and what license you have, you're paying significantly large and there's no industry in this country which actually pays the kind of license fee to government uh, and is controlled and you're competing with people who have no controls at all. A digital guy can do whatever he wants, uh, play whatever he wants, create whatever he wants and we pay the license and get controlled. So that's really the biggest, biggest challenge that is there and hopefully something will hap happen on that because the TRI has recommended that should change but you know, before the recommendations could happen, the elections happened and, uh, you know, heads moved. So, uh, it's still in the open. Uh, and if that changes, everything else that we're talking about can get done. Because there will be enough of a EBITDA that every radio company makes to invest back in, you know, things that, you know, Abe was talking about. Because that's, that's really the core to the problems of the industry. The other big problem is that we are still living in our well. Right, and, and we're not seeing the larger picture and, and if, unless we start looking outside or at least get a treat of view of what's happening in the world, uh, I think the radio industry will struggle. So 30 to 40 percent of your revenue going into license fee, that's a huge, huge amount. Ab, you would like to add something? Is the same for you? It's similar. See, what has happened is earlier when we moved into a revenue, I remember in phase two when it was a fixed or phase one when it was a fixed fee model where you had to pay a flat fee uh, to the government. Then we moved into a revenue share and that was 
uh, amazing. I mean, overnight all of us became profitable and we were paying 4% of our revenue to the government. So it worked well. It works well because in a market where you make good revenue, you pay higher revenues uh, to the government and in a market where the revenues are very uh, low, you pay less. So that works. Then there was some real indiscriminate bidding by some of the radio operators on the phase three. When they overbid on the value of the markets that they picked up their second and third frequencies and the uh, license fee is linked to either 4% of your revenue or 0.25% of your highest uh, bidder. And because there's one, there were high bidders which were beyond being reasonable, all of us in the main cities, which is where our revenues are, are not going by the revenue share. We are going by the uh, share of that indiscriminate bidder. So therefore, costs are really high. The which is more? I mean, the rule Hugely is… Hugely like more. We are not operating at a purpose. Okay. See, so, yeah, we can't work this on a MG model. This mm -hmm. has to be a revenue share model. Even when we talk about digital rights, it, there, the current discussions are saying, give me a flat so much, I don't care how much money you make. You can't operate that way. We run a business. It, unless it gets into a reasonable revenue share, we make more money, we'll obviously share uh, more money. This won't move ahead. And yeah, I think fee should challenge. be reasonable and, you know, rational, you know, to industry to grow. And what is exactly industry doing, you know, to address this issue? Are you meeting with the new minister and… No, we're, you, we're, we're doing all that we can do and uh, hoping for uh, good sense to prevail. That's, that's about it. So, Dom… Yeah. Including getting self-certification certificates oh, and all that. That's the latest. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so now the last question, I would like to know what should be the long-term strategy, you know, for the growth of the radio sector from both of you? So one, another, uh, I think we've all been very lethargic and lazy when it comes to digital. There are a lot of new technologies which are evolving globally and people are uh, ado adopting that. For example, there is a lot of work happening in car audio, right? The kind of uh, work that's happening in uh, uh, car audio is huge. I kind of saw a demo where within the four seats of the car, they found consumers are consuming different kinds of content. So they're creating seamless uh, capsules where you can listen to four different kinds of audio and it doesn't interfere with each other. So lots of work happening there. The, the dial of the radio has been completely transformed so that you can, uh, on the dial you can get both digital and uh, FM radio and there's a tracking of who's listening and uh, all that. So lots of stuff is happening there. But we've somewhere been very lethargic to all this. We've just ticked boxes. Chalo, we also have a website. Chalo, we also have a social media thing. So, so unless now government is trying to push us into digital audio broadcast. It's a great technology. But the challenge is you need devices. So unless the ecosystem of the devices come in, it's a difficult sell. You, how do you people listen to digital audio, uh, audio broadcast? There are a couple of technologies on that. So these are stuff that because we have not really put our heads together and addressed, these opportunities are passing us by. Yeah. All of us are driven by quarter numbers, so our focus is saying this quarter we should deliver this number. So Yeah, I think we are working on medium term. Yeah, and, and, and my view is that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all have to be looking at ourselves as content creators. Uh, we have to look at ourselves as creators first, whether this is the medium, this is the platform, uh, it really doesn't matter. If we keep ourselves open to uh, new mediums and new platforms, uh, we'll th all survive. Uh, I don't think we should get too caught up with uh, whether I am a radio person or a television person or a, you know, a Facebook person or an Insta influencer or whatever it is, whatever the medium exists, whatever the platform exists, I am a content creator and I will survive. That's, that's really, need, that really needs to be the philosophy of every single creator in the room or in the industry, uh, saying that it doesn't matter what, what happens in the future, 
I will survive because I am a content creator and I could create good content for for my viewer. Wonderful. Uh, I would like to have a you know rapid fire round if you allow me. Uh, should I start with you? I think it's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the one conspiracy theory uh, you kind of believe in. Conspiracy theory. So the the theory that um, audio is far far more impactful and far far more powerful than video. <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, given a chance, uh, who would you like to give your voice to? My voice to? Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody. Uh, <laughs> There is nobody. I can think of some conspiracy theories though. I can, I, you know, I, I think the BCCI made sure that Australia was kicked out of this, uh, this World Cup in, for taking revenge on the last one. Okay. Next we have, what is the most quirky song on your playlist? Most? Uh, quirky? Quirky? Funny? Yeah. Quirky song. I heard something the other day. Some kal raat ek chor aaya tha mere ghar pe or something like that. <laughs> that I think was the most, uh, you know, quirky song that I kept listening to for some time. <laughs> was Just, I think was the was the artist. So I, I mean, you're right. I mean, none of these songs last, so you can't remember them the 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 week after. So it's extremely short lived. So I'm still very much a uh, old era classic rock kind of person. These things, I can't even, you know, re recollect the second time I hear it, so. Okay, no problem. What is the biggest blunder you have seen on radio? On radio? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can talk about a lot of them, but, uh, you know, I think uh, the biggest blunder that we're making is not, you know, uh, getting our glasses corrected. We need to look out into the future and see what the future of content is and uh, if radio companies look at that that way, I think they have the best creative people uh, in the industry. I don't think any, com I mean, I, I, I talk to a lot of, lot of startups and a lot of startups come to you and say, we have created a content company. I say, what can, they have 10 people there and they create a content company. We have 100 people in our organization and we are still not calling ourselves a content company. This guy with 10 people in a startup is calling himself a content company and going around, you know, selling uh, his, show, giving his card and, you know, they don't even give cards nowadays, you know, giving his uh, introduction to people. So that's really something that, that needs to get uh, re-corrected in radio companies. So you went on a serious note. I was looking for a lighter note. Oh, okay. Serious topic. F. Sorry, what is the question again? I can't forget. The biggest blunder you have seen on radio? See, I think as an industry, um, collaborating is far more stronger than competing. And for the longest time, all the large networks believe we are competing with each other and not competing with the category, right? This whole audio versus video and all that is our doing because we've not looked at the larger issues. We said, oh, I have to, I have money, so let me pay a higher music right so that he will bleed. So that blunder we've done for 20 years and we've still not recovered from that. Okay. What is your most favorite advertising jingle? Do they have jingles anymore? I don't know. Yeah. I, I've forgotten this. Old, old Washing powder Nirma maybe. Okay. <laughs> Yours? Dun badal ke to dekho. Wonderful. So, it was really an insightful and an interesting talk. And thank you for taking time out uh, to come to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you.